there welcome to my channel my name is linda i bet you can say it with me i've got a lot of fun diy home decor crafts for you today so what are we waiting for let's get started today we're going to be working on some rustic fourth of july home decor so let's get started with project number one for this project, I'm going to be using my loved extra long paint sticks and I'm going to cut them just right below that little notch and I've got seven of them. And I tape two or three together at one time so that I could get a bunch cut at one time, you know, with my miter box and saw here. Just makes it a little bit quicker for the job. And then uh, I've also got a couple of paint sticks I cut just to kind of fit the back at the top and bottom to give it the stability on the back so, you know, Paint sticks don't fall apart, even though wood glue is really good. And then I cut one extra little piece that'll go at the top. I'll show you that here in a little bit. So I'm using my wood glue here. We're just going to start uh, adding wood glue on the sides of our paint sticks. And of course, this um, sign will be meant to hang vertical. Okay, so this is going to be a vertical sign. Get to the last paint stick here. I kind of skipped all that for you. can get a little boring watching me add wood glue. But once I get those together, I am, of course, going to use some clamps here and clamp it. And then once I do that, while that is kind of drying a little bit, we'll go ahead and add our little sticks to the top and the bottom. I'll also add a tiny little piece right above that top stick just because paint sticks aren't very thick and I wanted to add an extra little piece so I have a lot more thickness that I can put a picture hanger on it. Okay, you'll see that here in just a second. I'll freeze it there. You can see at the top just to give us that picture hanging area. Okay, so here is our sign ready to go. Now, I chose to use this star from Hobby Lobby. If you want to keep in with do uh, Dollar Tree, this star would be perfectly wonderful. But I love that kind of fun shape from Hobby Lobby. And I took that little star off and then I filled the hole. So I went ahead and pre-cut papers. Now, all my papers are cut a little bit shorter all the way around. So my top square is meant for where, you know, the star would go. It's about six and a quarter inches tall, about seven and a quarter inches wide. And then I cut red. Red and white stripes loosely red and white because I want it to look a little more rustic of course seven of them and they're about 11 and a half inches tall by about one inch and then my star will sit on top and I cut a little piece of paper you know obviously a little bit shorter all the way around to fit the center of the star now let's move on to painting I'm going to use Dixie Belt chalk paint indie color drop cloth and of course I'll paint the front and the sides of the star don't need to worry about the back because well that's going to be glued down. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, and then, of course, we'll move on to painting our sign. I will paint the back fully so that it looks nice. And then the front, just mainly around the sides. And I really wanted to make sure that I got into, like, the grooves between the paint sticks. Because when I go to distress this, I, I want those grooves to kind of show and that of course is the reason I chose uh, paint sticks because I want it to look more like slat boards. Okay, you could, of course, use just, you know, one long sign from Dollar Tree. It doesn't even have to be that long. A short sign, one of the square pre-made signs, flip it over, use the back, or a long sign, flip it over, use the back, that kind of thing. Okay, now I'm also using uh, one of these wood rulers from Dollar Tree. They come in a two-pack, I believe. I'm removing the sticky, of course, and then I'm going to cut that down, I believe, here just about six and three-quarter inches, just using my miter box and saw here. I just want a little area for, you know, to house a word or so. And then I'm going to sand around the edges, kind of rounding off the square uh, edges on the sides and everything. And then I've cut a piece of paper to fit that all the way around, a little bit short, of course. And then I'm going to come in and paint that with the same drop cloth paint. I decided I wanted to round the sides a little bit because I do that on the sign as well when I sand it. Get the paint on here, and then we'll come in and distress it a little bit, and then I'll show you how the distressing on my sign and star look. Just distressing this one by hand. The other, here you can see that's ready, and you can see how I distressed. Looks all nice around the sign. Use my electric sander for that, of course. 
Now I'm coming in. I'm bringing my scrapbook paper to my sewing machine. You all knew it was coming. Those have been with me a while. Those of you that are new, yes, I love to sew on my papers. I sew on it just like it's regular fabric. There's no specialty to it at all. I do use a size 10 or 11 needle. Some people have tried it. The holes turn out too big, so you might want to go down a size to like a size 9. You can use cotton or all polyester thread. I use all polyester. That's what my machine likes. It only has a stitch length up to four, so I use four stitch length and my tension set on four. Really easy. Don't try to freak out. Just sew on it. And I have a sewing machine. This is, of course, how beautiful it looks. I don't care that it's crooked or a little bit straighter because that adds to the rusticness of it. I have this sewing machine that I use just for papers. It's just an L Cheapy from Walmart. I think I got it after Thanksgiving one year, like $49. Now I like to take the open end of my scissor blades and I scrape along the edges of all my papers to give it this more of this rustic texture look to it. Okay, I'm going to be using this uh, word that I did, you know, on my Cricut uh, design space. I'll have all the fonts listed in my description box that I used. You could just use letter stickers or rub on stickers here, or if you have fantastic handwriting, you could paint marker or Sharpie marker it. Of course, once I've got my vinyl on that, we'll glue that to the front of our little mini sign. And then we'll, of course, glue our paper to the front of our wood star. And then we'll start gluing down our papers onto our vertical flag. Now, when I go rustic and stuff, I don't go literal with the papers. Like, you can see my blue paper at the top. Um, you know, I kind of go country colors of that. And then, like, the blue paper at the top doesn't have, like, stars on it type thing. And then the red and white paper, um, you know it's not red and white striped paper. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just kind of take a little bit of liberties with the patterns and things like that. Although one of my projects today, I do actually go for stars and stripes. So that's a little bit different for me. But so, you know, I just have a little fun with it and make it that little bit more country rustic. Once I get all my papers on here, I think it looks really cute. We'll go ahead and glue down our wood star at the top into our blue star area. Kind of center that. And then we'll go ahead and glue down our little freedom sign here right over the top of our star. Kind of slant it just a little bit. And then I've taken some of that drop cloth paint, add a little water, and then I take my fan brush, dip it into that, wipe off the excess a little bit, and then I tap my fan brush to get some splatters onto our project to add a little bit more of a rustic look. And then once I do that, this project is complete. So let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these signs from Dollar Tree. I'll show you some options here in a minute. I'm using literal stars paper and red striped paper for this one. And then I've got these metal stars. They're Tim Holtz ideology. You get them in the scrapbooking section. You can find them at Hobby Lobby or Joann's. I like them. They got a nice flat back for gluing. And so for the sign, we want to take off like this coffee and then these little metal pieces. Now you can save these metal pieces and these tacks if you don't have stars to use, of course. Um, for sign alternatives, you could use these from Dollar Tree. They are a little bit longer. You can cut them down or these have the paper on it remove the paper or these thinner undone wood pieces. You can stay with these thin pieces that came off of this, but if you're using a sign that doesn't have on them, you can buy these in like the hardware section. Um, I don't remember what they're called, but they're by Hillman. So they look kind of like these corner brackets that they weren't very much. I, and I think I got four in a package and I do like them because they're a little bit thicker. So it's an option for you if you end up not having an exact sign like I have and you want this look. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my uh, 
paper down. I'm cutting it a little bit shorter all the way around. Uh, the sign is, of course, longer than uh, 12 inches. My paper is 12 by 12. So that's okay because I'm going to have this run through the center just like this. And then we'll use the actual star paper um, for both sides. I'm just lining it up with this uh, red and white paper or red and cream paper. <laughs> so it's the same width. And then I'll just mark it here for how short I need to go. So yeah, I'm actually using literal stars paper, although it's actually from Christmas paper, but you don't know that but only because I told you. And then actual striped paper for this one, because I know in the last project I talked about just kind of, you know, not being so stars and stripes, you know, just kind of being, uh, you know, taking a little bit of liberties with it. But this one is actually star paper and stripe paper. So kind of proud of myself. <laughs> now coming in with painting this sign all the way around front and back again using that Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth. I'm not going to add paper to the back side because a lot of you know that been with me a long time I'll often paper the front and the back. I'm just going to sand the back so it's nice and distressed. And then of course now I'm bringing my papers again to my sewing machine here and sewing around it. Now if you're just if you're a sewer or you want to start sewing on your papers and stuff I do want to advise you, and I'm really sorry about this, that when you start sewing on your papers, if you decide you like it, nothing ever looks the same again without it. You go to do it and you're like, nope, got to sew on it. So I'm sorry, you'll forever sew your paper from here on out. <laughs> Here's my sign all distressed and ready to go. And so I'm uh, going to start distressing around the edges of my papers as well here. Want it to have that rustic look to it. Yeah, this is actual Christmas paper. And the writing's really faint in the middle of the stars, but if I was to really hold it up close to the camera, you could kind of see, like, some Christmas words. But it was the only star paper I had. But again, it's really light and faint. You can barely even notice it. But now I've let you in on my little secret. Shh. Tell no one. <laughs> Once everything's distressed, we're going to come in and start gluing our pieces down here just like I want it. This was so easy and quick to make. I have made One Nation Under God here. I made this on my Cricut uh, Design Space, printed out some vinyl here. Don't fear because I did for this project and the next project, created a couple of free printables for you. I will have the link in my description box to my blog where you can grab those up. Now what you can do is when you go to print the free printable out, print it out directly onto the scrapbook paper you're going to use and then cut that to fit your sign. Or of course you can print it out and do like a tracing method with it. So once I get this into place, of course, I want to come in and do like I did on the first project, taking that drop cloth paint there, uh, still mixed with water from that first project, put my fan brush into it, wipe off the excess, and tap it to get us some cute little splatters. And then we're going to come in and glue down our little things here. Now, of course, if you have the ones, you know, the original sign I started with, you can use the ones that came with it. But I just like these because they're thicker. So I thought they would just look a little bit more upscale. And then, of course, I'll go to glue on my metal stars. If you don't have stars, you can put thumbtacks back into position. Or if you bought, uh, you know, bought these little flat things from the hardware section, you know, they come with screws. You can screw those in. But once I get my stars on, this project is complete. So let's move on to project number three. For this project, yes, you knew it. It was in your heart and mind. You were just so certain and you were correct. I'm back to paint sticks. For this project, you're going to need 13 paint sticks. Never fear. I will have an alternative for you. 
I'm going to just go start by gluing all of these together. I don't really glue down where the paint sticks kind of have that little divot end, you know, kind of the handle part, because I will tape that off in a minute and, you know, we don't use that part anyway. So I'm just going to kind of skip ahead for you because, as I said before in that first project, can get a little boring watching me glue paint sticks together. Once they are all glued together, of course, I will come in again with my clamps and get those clamped down. And I'm going to bring you in an alternative here. You can use one of these unfinished circle signs from Dollar Tree. It's smaller than the 13 paint sticks. So, I mean, because you could glue paint sticks to it, but you're not going to get 13 on there if you want 13 for, you know, the 13 stripes. But you can do the rest of the method I'm going to be showing you. Once my paint sticks are all dried, I'm taping off the section with that little divot. And I want to draw a gihugic circle here. So I'm going from that tape to the end of my paint sticks drawing one line and I'm going to turn it and draw another line so I have a nice big X and I have my center. I had to learn this on YouTube. I'm not this smart. <laughs> Taking a piece of twine here, I'm going to make a little loop on one end. I'm going to make a little loop on the other end and I usually have to kind of undo and do the loop a few times because once you're done from end to end on the loop, I want it to be at least about six and a half inches long because like I said, I want a 13 inch circle. Okay, once I get it to that length, I'm gonna use a little thumbtack here and I'm gonna do a thumbtack one loop down. And then I'm gonna take a pen here and while holding down the center, use that twine to draw me a 13 inch circle. So if you get the circle sign from Dollar Tree, you're all done. <laughs> I'm come outside here. I'm using my uh, jigsaw here and I'm going to go ahead and cut my circle out. A nice sunny day, very rare here on the Oregon coast, but boy, we got one. Just showing you a little bit of that. Don't be afraid to use your power tools. And again, if you have that circle, skip all of this. You are lucky. I could, like I said, use that circle, but you all know I like kind of that slat board look. And I wanted it just a little bit bigger because I wanted it actual enough paint sticks to simulate, you know, the 13 stripes on a flag. Right, coming around to this end. It actually, this worked pretty good. I got myself a new blade and it cut just like butter. Nice and easy. And then once that is all cut out, I'm going to come in with my electric sander. I'm going to sand it all nice down flat on the top and, of course, the sides. And I will flip it over and I do sand off all the writing on that paint stick. So it takes me a little bit more effort than if you use that free uh, pre-formed circle. But I like how it turned out. And here is how it turned out. All nice and pretty. I do cut a couple of paint sticks here. We're going to place in the center so we have that stability on the back. Okay, I attach those a little bit later. I just kind of show you, but I attach those later. Now we're going to start taping this off. So whether you did the paint stick method or you're using that one from Dollar Tree, that pre-made circle sign, follow it from here. Um, and I'm cutting, I went about five and a half inches in and then I'm going, you know, side and then up on that because that's going to kind of be my star area and then I'm going to come on another reason I like the paint sticks because it helps me to tape off each individual paint stick for my uh, stripes I'll be using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Yankee blue for this project rustic red and then Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint. If you're not using the paint sticks, each of my sections, because the paint sticks are about one inch wide, you're going to need to tape off on your pre-made circle about one inch wide for your stripes. So we'll come in first here, and of course I'm going to uh, do two coats of each color and come right in here and paint in my red stripes. I'll skip this ahead for you a little bit. And then once that paint's dry, we're going to go ahead and peel off in between. Doesn't it look just so pretty? I know. And then I decided to distress it. I'm really like, I wish I, I went back and forth whether to not distress or distress it. <laughs> That's in a story for another day. Okay, so once we peel that tape off, now we're going to come back in and re-tape over the red stripe so that we can now put in our white stripes in between, of course. So here we are painting in our white stripes. Again, two coats just so it's nice and painted beautifully. Again, I'll skip this ahead for you. 
And then once that's all dry, we're going to peel this tape off. Here's where I'm really just loving how crisp and clean it looks and really wished I hadn't distressed it, but it looks cute. You'll have to let me know what you think, but I think I should have left it and not distressed it. But then I go back and forth on it. I know we're back to that again. Peel all this off and then we're going to go in and start working on our star area. Okay, once that's done, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tape this off now take the tape off and retape it so we cover up our pretty that we made because we want it to look all nice and fresh tape it around the sides as well of course looking wonderful and then we're going to come in with that blue paint get that again two coats all painted up and around the sides as well i extended everything around to the sides Perfectly wonderful. Here, you can see it. I'm proving it to you. Painted it around the sides. <laughs> Once that's dry, we will go in and work on the stars. Now, I created just like a little, you know, stencil here with stars. I know you can buy stars, stencils, and stuff like that. There is another option I'll show you here, which is what I almost did um, and not even have to stencil at all. Dollar Tree has these, you know, wood stars. You could do like one wood star in the center or a couple of smaller stars little wood stars or the metal stars that you can get off the Dollar Tree signs. So that's some options for you. And like I said, I almost went that way. Um, but again, I went, chose to go ahead and stencil. So I'm just coming in and I'm starting out. Uh, I, I like to start out with these, like paint brush it on first and then come in with a pouncy brush to kind of pounce it on to get a little bit of texture. But I start with the paint brush first to get it a little bit thin. And then I come in with the pouncy brush, still with thin paint, to pounce it on, like I said, for that texture. And once that's all dry, we'll go ahead and take the stencil off. Look how sharp and beautiful that looks. Again, for a third time with you. Every time, like, when I was editing this and stuff, I'm like, I shouldn't have distressed it. I shouldn't have distressed it. Anyway, there it is. It's said and it's done. So we'll get all the tape and everything peeled off here. And we'll just kind of take a look at it as a whole. I just think it looks really pretty. Love it. But I do this to it, enough said, and here we go. So I've got my paint sticks on the back, kind of in the center, so I can make sure I get all the paint sticks to get that stability again so nothing pops apart. Here it is, all distressed. Now you can see the difference. Which way should I have gone? Let me know. So I'm going to use one of these signs from Dollar Tree. I've filled the holes with just some wood filler, and I'm going to go ahead and paint it up with that uh, Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint, a couple of coats. And then I, of course, will distress around it as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is come in with a stencil here. And I just put the whole thing off. And then I'm peeling out the parts that I want left open to stencil in. And again, I have this as a free printable on my blog for you. I've given you, it's the same quote. I just gave you kind of in two different designs. One a little more vertical and one a little more horizontal. I'm coming in first with the white swan paint to just... Um, stencil that in first so this method allows a little less bleeding if you come in with your first layer of stencil paint that matches the sign color it does work very well this way because then I'm going to come in with black paint and I really don't want black paint because trying to uh, distress it and bleed over onto that white, it's not very fun. So once that white paint is dried, I'm coming in with, it's Debbie's Design Diary, uh, little black dress is what it's called, and coming and just really lightly stenciling it, uh, pouncing it, I mean. Skip ahead for you here a little bit so you don't have to see the whole thing. But then when I peel it off, it looks so beautiful, looking really good. Again, y'all know it. I'm not even going to say it. You know I'm thinking it. Peel all of this off. Perfect. So if you use the free printable, you can just print it. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. You can just print out like paper and then glue the paper to the front and look cute. Here it is all distressed. Yep, quite a difference, but you know, we're doing it. We're going with it. I'm going to glue some extra, extra large popsicle sticks to the back two of them because I want this to raise up off of our round sign here. Okay. And then before I glue that on, I'm coming in with some splatters. Same technique as the first two, only I changed my paint to the DIY white swan chalk paint. Once that's dry, we're going to come in and glue our little sign across the center. 
And then you could leave it like this. I think it's cute, but then I decided to make my sign into a little tray. So I had silver handles and I spray painted them in black. So I'm gonna come in here and just kind of make some pre-drilled holes here. I had to find some little tiny screws. They are a little bit long out the back. I don't show you barely. I mean like a 16th of an inch longer because paint sticks aren't that thick. But I just took uh, my sander and I just sanded the back of those so that they were nice and smooth. I just sanded the little bit of point from the screw off the back side so that it was flat against the wood. Okay? Hope that's understandable. Because if I sell this, I don't want someone cutting themselves from screws sticking off the back. So I'll get these screwed in so it looks really nice. And then I decided I want this tray to lift up a little bit more. The two vertical strips aren't quite tall enough, so I'm using a square piece of wood from Dollar Tree, just adding some wood glue here. And while I'm into position here, you can see those four little screws on the outer edges of the tray. They're all nice and flat. Anyway, I'll get the square piece on. Once it sets up, this project is complete. So I hope you like all the projects that I came up with today. Yes, even this distressed sign. I had to say it one more time. Okay, maybe one more time more. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite and let me know if you think I was right in distressing this sign. I need to know. <laughs> Please give this video a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, you wandered in and you're checking things out and you did what you saw to here today, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single project from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Why do we have such a hard time surrendering to Jesus? Why do we have such a hard time letting go of the control of our situation and let go to a God of all authority who has the power to lead us down the right path to redeem or fix the situation we are in? He knows all the aspects of the situation. He knows exactly how it will turn out. He knows all the resources you need to get through the dark tunnel of your problem. Yet we insist on trying to keep it close to our heart. We insist on keeping it all buttoned up within the confines of what we can see, hear, feel, taste, touch. How can we have that slight ability to not trust that he knows what's best for us? How come it's easier to keep that issue cut tightly in a closed fist? Even though we know that God can do all things, we still insist on trying to do it ourselves. So what can we do to change our mindset? What can we do to allow our control to be laid bare at the feet of Jesus? First, we have to understand that we didn't come to this earth of ourselves. We have a father who orchestrated our birth, a father who ordains our entire lifespan, and a father who brings us back home to him with his command. We have a father who has all authority and all power on earth and in heaven. And knowing all of this, what right do we have to try and step in to fix something within our limitations of being purely human? Second, we have to have an understanding that we are loved beyond any cognitive reasoning. And third, we have a relationship with Jesus that cannot be broken. We are bound by a contract of love that cannot be undone. And knowing these kinds of purely unbreakable bonds, we need to allow ourselves to be open in surrender to his willing sacrifice to keep us safe. Acknowledge him with respect and trust and have the courage to let him take care of it. Be confident that he is in every aspect of your life. Embrace the freedom of knowing he has your back. Today is the day to let it go. Today is the day to surrender at the feet of him who loves you and allow him to help you. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.